Hello, I'm Louise Mathias, a holistic barrister, advanced trained mediator and FDRP. I'm also a certified high performance and emotional intelligence coach and consultant, and I'm certified in Dare to Lead Leadership Development. Are you in a position of power or you've got status, authority in an organisation? And as a res this has come about as a result of your career progression. Um, but as a result of being in this position, do you sometimes feel like you're an imposter leader? Um, that you've got this leadership as a result of purely your career progression, but you really have come to realise that leadership is about people skills, managing people, getting the best out of people, looking at their potential and encouraging that potential. And you've gotten to this position and you go, well, I know technicality, but I'm not really clear on technical skills. But did you know that leadership skills are essential for life? They're life skills. They're, for, they're useful for when we're at home, dealing with or managing or interacting uh, with our family, with our friends in the office, with our colleagues, counterparts, in the courtroom, when we're trying to influence um, from, the bed, uh, from the bar table, at mediations. We all need um, leadership skills because leadership is about influence. And we all influence each other negatively or positively, whether we are aware of it or not, each and every day. So I'm encouraging to be that courageous leader that is intentionally encouraging and building a courageous culture. But do you know what the first fundamental principle of leadership skills is? It's really being courageous to be honest enough with yourself, to know your strengths and your weaknesses. Firstly, deciding and knowing who you really are, what you stand for, what's the best of you, and protecting that best of you under all circumstances. And number two is, what's really important to you? What are your values? And thirdly, how do you want to lead? What, what are you trying to um, do by your leadership? What results and goals are you trying to attain? What legacy do you want to lead, leave? So when we speak about the first one, who are you? And honestly asking ourselves who we are, who we stand for. Well, let me ask you a couple of questions. Do you lead? Do you drive productivity with fear, uncertainty? Or do you try and de-escalate it and try to make and build a courageous culture? Does your firm profess values, but they don't really operationalise them? Uh, in the behaviours that are expected of those who work in the firm. You, you may not practice them. You don't expect other people to practice them. Do you articulate what's expected of your team and the people who work in the firm? Do you acknowledge that values is a huge part of working in this organisation? As well as such things as diversity, respect, good communication, all of the things that are value-driven behaviours. Do you, uh, do you culture, do you nurture a culture of diversity, equity? And do you look for people who are, who don't fit into the mould, realising that everybody has got their own unique way of seeing the world and that everybody can contribute something meaningful into an organisation and into a team? Or are you a person who fosters an in and out culture? You're cool you're not cool, or show favouritism to some team members and um, marginalise others. This is really systemic bias. So are you, cult are you nurturing systemic bi bias or are you dismantling systemic uh, bias by your own behaviours, by valuing connecting with people, regardless of who they are, and doing it on an authentic basis, knowing that everybody has something meaningful to contribute. Great leaders are accountable for how they show up each and every day as the best version of themselves, how they care for the people who are under their care and how they serve other people. As a leader, do you model courageous behaviour? This may be hard to hear, but it may be at this point in time, you don't have the skills to lead others effectively to communicate effectively, to de-escalate conflict effectively, to model, operationalise and practice with value-driven behaviours, or to cultivate a belonging culture. Strong leadership requires courage.
courage to consistently push yourself out of your comfort zone. Not relying on only your strengths, because that's the best of who you are, but also being really aware of what your big weaknesses are and addressing those big weaknesses. So you learn to practice, to live and to lead up at the next level. It's almost impossible to reach a higher level of leadership without having a mentor or without getting training. You don't learn those skills through just career progression.